Thank you very much, Mr. Sharkar and everybody from SWAN, uh, especially Mr. Sharkar from this, uh, for this exceptionally um, eloquent uh, and interesting introduction. You have been most kind and thank you for allowing me to uh, be part of your wonderful uh, you know, initiative, I would still call it, although it's been 12 years. So, um, I know currently uh, we are all reeling under the, you know, uh, wrath of this pandemic, which is the COVID-19, which is uh, commonly called. And um, I want to give a quick introduction, what's going on and what uh, are the plausible questions that are coming into everybody's minds. So first of all, COVID-19, uh, it's a short form and it stands for coronavirus disease. So CO for coronavirus, corona and VI for the virus and D for the disease and 19 because it was first diagnosed or first came into light in the scientific community and medical community at the um, end of uh, 2019, which was I think about around November and December time. So the medical term which is associated with this uh, coronavirus uh, disease is called SARS-CoV-2 because there was a previous SARS-CoV-1 a few years back. So the SARS, S-A-R-S, it stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And uh, uh, the COV, of course, you can uh, figure it out. It's CO for the corona and V for the virus and two because there was a previous one similar type, which was the SARS-CoV-1, uh, almost like a decade ago. And uh, this is the second one, which is the uh, designation gets for number two. And uh, it is an RNA virus. Uh, there are two kinds of virus, a DNA virus and an RNA virus. It's interesting that this is an RNA virus because an RNA virus cannot do a whole lot by itself because it does not have the capacity to multiply its uh, protein structures, which are the ultimate, uh, you know, uh, messengers or the soldiers, you may call, that cause all the effects of any organism. So it is mandatory for this kind of viruses to be with a host because it will need the host's DNA to do whatever it needs to do even for its own survival. So um, we just are humbled that we as humans, we are the most complex creations of nature. That's what we at least like to call us. Um, we have been literally completely decimated by this small organism, which itself is not even a full organism. So this is, I would say, uh, great equalizer and uh, a fact that, you know, in nature, not uh, the most complex or the most powerful beings or, uh, you know, organisms can be overpowering or omnipotent. So anybody can handle or, you know, uh, get leveled with anybody. So um, a little further background in terms of the propagation and how these things has been, you know, uh, going around around the world. So you might have heard that back in almost a year ago that there were different strains or types. So these were the original forms. So um, I believe they were type A, B and C. Uh, they were also called the European uh, type or the Spanish uh, and the Chinese type. So they were the first ones that sh uh, emerged in and basically uh, got into the human population. And uh, they started propagating and causing whatever uh, effects it could in those specific genetic and geographical uh, populations. And during this process, it changed its structure and um, you can call it, it also underwent certain mutations, which ultimately resulted in the variant forms. One has to understand 
this is a living organism, although it's a very, very minute, uh, you know, and a very less complex compared to a human body or any other bigger, uh, you know, uh, living organisms roaming the earth at this point of time. Despite that, this tiny organism has some innate um, protective mechanism that every or like every organism, it will try to propagate itself, keep itself alive and do whatever it can within its power to multiply and maximize its chance for survival. In doing so, what it has is it has self-selected itself for the various different genetic um, host, uh, I mean, genetic population, right? So if you look at uh, the different populations of the world, European, Asian, American, uh, Indian, we are genetically somewhat different. So I believe I don't have the full scientific data or all the information uh, at my disposal, but studying or, um, you know, treating patients on a daily basis from day one, I have seen that it uh, looks like this virus has um, had some kind of predilection, depending on which strain it is or which kind of variant you may call it, to affect or, uh, you know, cause medical and symptomatic effects in different genetic groups in a different way. And to that effect, I believe that the Indian subcontinent and the Indian population as a, a whole was somewhat protected during the first and the second waves. Um, first and I would say like half of the second wave. But then it the virus basically thought, wait a second, this is not really working for me. I need to be able to m propagate and, you know, uh, spread throughout this particular population much easily. So then it got itself mutated. And now we see what we are calling the Delta variant. And that uh, has been very, very successful to penetrate the Indian population and cause havoc. And unfortunately, you all can see what it resulted in massive deaths and uh, comorbidities. So um, I believe having said that one would uh, have a next question what is uh, the next uh, step or what are we looking at for in the coming few months? Are we going to be able to get out of the clutches of this, uh, you know, uh, pandemic or are you going to succumb even further? So nobody has a crystal ball and only God I would be able to, uh, would be able to say what's the end point and what exactly the human population has to endure before you know, we are uh, able to overcome uh, the destruction which has been you know, caused by this virus. Despite that, the human body or any uh, living organism has some kind of protective mechanism built within itself as well, what, uh, which is what we call immunity. So there are two kinds of immunity. One is innate and one is acquired. Innate is one uh, kind of immunity that you are born with by default. And the acquired is an immunity that we have our immune system. And depending on what kind of exposure it is presented, it will um, create uh, various uh, antibodies and various other mechanisms to kind of prevent the onslaught of the similar kind of uh, organisms in the future and or mitigate the complications or the severity of the effects. So uh, we do not have immunity because we were never exposed to this virus in the first place. So that's out of question. Now we are talking about acquired immunity. So acquired immunity can be two kinds. One is herd, which is natural, and the other one is uh, via vaccination. Both the modalities are kind of similar in the back end, which means that the host is being exposed with the protein structure, which is the antigen of the organism, which in this case is the coronavirus uh, 19 or the SARS-CoV-2. And we hope 
our immune system, the T cells, the B cells, they, you know, pick up those antigen and then they take them back to their, you know, uh, processing uh, centers and then they create uh, protective antibodies so that in the future when we are exposed to the virus in a larger volume or in a stronger form, then the body is able to withstand the entry request uh, of this virus. Well, it's not a request, it's a forceful, you know, brute force entry uh, that it uh, engages in. So one has to be very clear, no vaccination or immunity can be used as a guarantee for no further infection. That does not happen. Very, very rarely it does happen, especially in case of a virus, which is very fast moving in terms of it can change its uh, structure, it becomes even further difficult. If it's a very slow moving virus, like if you can call it like a smallpox, chickenpox, hepatitis, or even the HIV, it's much easier because you don't have a whole lot of permutations and combinations to go through to a, be able to prevent the entry or the you know subsequent effects. But in this case, uh, in most respiratory virus, they have very, very strong advantages. Number one, it's very easy for them to propagate because they are primarily airborne. And uh, secondly, it's very easy for them to gain entry as well because you can't stop breathing and it's very hard to make anything airtight because if it is airtight, then you are basically having to circulate the same air over and over, which is by definition contradictory to you know survival of uh, um, aerobic organism, which we are. That means we require oxygen for survival, for our basic cellular functions. So having said that, now you can understand this tiny virus, which is a minuscule particle, it can get entry into the human body very easily, and then it can propagate even easier. So now we are basically stacked against a formidable enemy, which we can't see, which has strong advantages, because the human DNA is very receptive and we are constantly opening up uh, you know, the DNA structure in our nucleus for various cellular functions because we are a complex organism. So the more the complex organism, the more uh, you know, uh, functionality that the DNA has to carry through, right? So that itself gives the virus many, many, many more entry points. So depending on where it can attach itself in our DNA, it can cause uh, resultant effects. So you will see some people, they are primarily being affected from a respiratory standpoint, and that's where it's, you know, look, uh, you know, confined to. And some people you, will, you might have heard that, you know, they had a lot of other complications which were disseminated all throughout their organ systems the heart, the coagulation system, uh, the kidneys, the liver, the brain. So this is uh, kind of related to where and how the virus has attached itself into our DNA uh, once it has opened up for other functionalities. And then it was able to make proteins using its RNA and our DNA and our messenger RNA and the host of, you know, ribosomes and, you know, mitochondria in our nucleus. And it basically capitalized on our resources for its own, you know, uh, vested interests. And we as the organism pay for the uh, whole process in terms of our, you know, side effects and uh, the medical illness that we ultimately see. Okay. So, um, any questions until this uh, far? Dr. Navan, that was a very elaborate, uh, what do you call, uh, go through to the entire process. It almost covered most of our questions, but then there are a few. Uh, Rishav, sure. if you are there, Kohosh, uh, Rishav, if you are there, then please uh, say your uh, questions. Uh, yes. Yes. Sir, I have a question. And uh, did we lose uh, audio? 
No, I think he is. Uh, he's there. I can't hear him. Okay. Hello. So yes. Yes. Uh, hello. Yeah. Go ahead. So my question is that uh, if we take uh, two different vaccines, uh, I have heard uh, of uh, some of our close friends. They took one vaccine in first dose and another vaccine in the second dose, and some of them has died within 24 hours. It, it was just uh, another cardiac arrest like situation, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there was uh, some kind of riti fena ke ki bole o gajla berona ota ke ki bole foaming throbbing yeah throbbing yes. yeah, foaming yes there foams uh other mukte sorry i have some problem in english go ahead i am i am multilingual go ahead hello riti can you help me to translate Go ahead. Yes, I'm yes, multilingual. Yes. You can speak in Bengali. Risha, Risha, if you want, you can talk. You can speak in Bengali also because oh, Navalny is 100 percent Bengali man. Navalny is 100 percent Bengali man, and he said that he is multilingual. And Go ahead. before I ask Dr. Bisha, before I uh, before uh, Dr. Bisha starts his answer, and before uh, Risha, you finish up your question, please let us know whether this incident you are confident of or not. One man has taken two different vaccines in two different as first dose and second dose. This you have heard as a hoax, as a uh, campaign, as a social network message, or you have in reality, in real life, any, any friend who has taken this thing, what? In reality, this is not a hoax. OK, great. Then then you should make a logic complaint because as per the government of India protocol and standard and the, and the standard system, no one is supposed to have two different drugs, two different vaccine brands as the first dose and second dose, not yet. So if that has happened so, then they should, they should, they should lodge a complaint, a huge medical legal complaint, it will be before bringing this to your knowledge. Come there's not here. made a problem. Uh, sorry, there, there's not filed a complaint yet. Yeah, uh, and they so that will be they complicated. Should. Let's focus on the medical aspect of it. I, I think so. I sort of understand what your questions are, right? So let's look at it this way from a very simplistic uh, eagle's eye view. The vaccines, they all right. Let me turn back the dial a little bit. Normally, for any organism, especially viruses, it takes almost three to four decades to create a vaccine in the normal way. OK, that has been the case. And in this particular case, we have not yet had exposure to this virus in the human population for. I think we had less than six to definitely nine months. I'm not exactly sure. Let's say if it is November they had exposure by May. I think they were already up and running on the virus. Uh, um, manufacturing Pfizer, Moderna and uh, AstraZeneca. These are the three front runners and Johnson Johnson's as well. So you, you can see you on, we only had six months to deal with, right? To prepare, although yes, they can come with a counter rebuttal that or an argument that oh, we have new newer technology right now. We have been doing it. That's yes, but that does not absolve you from the requirement that you need on hands. Uh, I mean, first hand information like this is not mathematics. Medical science is in medical science. It's almost next to impossible to have two plus two equal to four at every single time. It will sometimes be three, could be five, could be seven, could be zero. Right. And could be four as well. So having said that, the there were three i believe definitely i know of two because i don't have the inside information but uh, to my knowledge the thought process of creating this vaccine against this virus was kind of in two major uh, categories one was the deactivating or we call it attenuation so attenuation means basically making the virus weaker and weaker and weaker while still maintaining its majority of its protein structure okay that's called attenuation 
and the other one was jumping through a um, lot of other hurdles and basically fast forwarding itself uh, the whole process and get to the mrna which is the moderna uh, and uh, some of the other uh, vaccines so how a vaccination works right let's look at it that way so when you are talking about a vaccination you are introducing as i had mentioned earlier a protein that introduction can be natural by the virus itself gaining entry into your system or you can inoculate right either you can uh, inject it into the body of the host or you can introduce it via respiratory or other mucosal routes so basically it has to enter your bloodstream and your you know immune system has to be uh, exposed or they need to come in contact so once it comes in contact your t cells b cells depending on let's not get into the finer details uh, all these immune cells they will take those back to the uh, you know their processing center and they say okay this is uh, a new antigen we have been exposed to they will go through their database they will go through their uh, you know uh, library of uh, information and they'll say okay this doesn't match up so now we need to do something against this so how they will do it so every cell has the same internal structure a nucleus dna the ribosomes mitochondria etc right so you have to understand one thing anything that happens in the human body uh, for uh, literally for every organism it's ultimately the proteins that will form the structure of uh, the cell wall or the structure of uh, some you know hormone or some kind of cellular messenger but it has to be a protein ultimately because the proteins are the building blocks and the structures then they will uh, be assisted with certain other uh, you know um, cytokines or cellular messenger systems but they also have protein structures so ultimately the protein structure which is the main backbone of the structure has to be formed and this is what happens when the virus goes inside and tries to propagate so it will start forming all these different kind of proteins and the structures and whatever it needs to basically support its uh, whole agenda which is self propagation and continuation of survival right so now you see the, on the first instance of the vaccine that we were talking about you inoculated an attenuated form which you have in vivo uh, sorry in vitro you have uh, manipulated the virus you make them grow in various cell cultures uh, you know and uh, organic medium so that it keeps growing and then you take it uh, down a notch and then you keep doing that until you're kind of uh, sort of uh, confident that yes the virus uh, the virulence factor of the virus has been brought down to a acceptable degree but its protein structure and its antigenic um, capacity has not been compromised okay so now we have the structure with which we can use as a template to sort of copy the antigenic structure and use that structure to make antibodies so that we can withstand the entry um, attempt but to do that the dna first got attached with the rna now the rna gets this messenger rna formed because now it has to send the message message to the ribosomes where they will form the protein structures right so it takes time step by step so some of this that was the old way of doing and that used to take a longer time right now uh, the new technology they are jumping straight through because of this you know now we have the dna mapping we have lots of you know uh, artificial intelligence to back us uh, with for lots of propagation and computer simulated models so they you know bypassed or i would say fast forwarded all these steps and got directly to the mrna so they were saying okay this virus this is these are the specific sequences um of the you know uh the rna and this is what it's going to make so let's go jump ahead and copy this and make a mirror basically not copy mirror image that and then we are going to you know be ahead of the game and that's how they made the other kind of va vaccine right both of these ultimately come converge to a same endpoint if you say the same pathway at the ultimate end when you're talking about the human body 
yes, you can have various side effects or various different reactions because, again, we have not had enough time to get enough scientific data on the human population. So everything is up in the air, right? So this thing has a very, very different, uh, you know, scenario because it became medical, it became socioeconomic, it became political to be very, very, you know, to the utmost uh, extent, I would say. And everybody tried to capitalize this to their own benefits. So it's very complicated. Let's focus only on the medical aspect right now, right? So, um, <clears throat> In terms of vaccinating people, there are a lot of things involved. Number one is the logistics. Number two, you're talking about uh, economic expenditure. So you cannot uh, sort of compare two different countries because we don't know what their economic status is, what their uh, you know logistics situations are, and what's the availability of resources. So various factors comes in, right? But yes, it is. It was advisable that, you know, you stick to your one form because that way you are not confounding the possibilities of, you know, um, side effects or complications because most of it is still unknown. So that was the reason. And I would be very surprised. Uh, again, I don't have all the information uh, to make a specific comment, but with my background in medical field for this long, I would be very surprised just because of the vaccine second dose, the person died within 24 hours. That's that's very, very, very uh, unlikely. Right. So it is very possible that that person had other comorbidities or there were some other factors that played into the ultimate demise of that unfortunate individual. Do you have further details that I can elaborate on? Because just saying that he took one Pfizer and the other AstraZeneca and he died the next day um, will be very hard for me to comment. Do you know how he died? What was done? Was there an autopsy? What was the finding of the postmortem? Uh, you know, any idea? Or did do we have lab reports? Do we have blood work? As far, which as, can far tell us? as I know, as far as I know, uh, that person had some uh, heart issues. Cardiac what issues. exactly? Heart issue? You mean say what? Oh. What? How old was? Let's say. Well, uh, first of all, how old was that person? Uh, between uh, 35 and 50. That's I don't know the track. exact date. Exact date. Ex exact age. I understand, but you have to understand from a medical. From if you're talking uh, to a um, uh, you know doctor, 35 to 55. That's 20 years. He, that's a huge difference because in these 20 years, the person can accumulate lots of comorbidities, which will completely change his you know medical profile. So um, just give me time. I will you, try to get some information. That's OK. Let's look at it this way. So the way you are presenting the information, it looks like that person died of a cardiac arrest, right? So it is very likely I have seen a lot of these kind of cases that what might have happened again. I don't know. Please don't quote me on that because I don't have all the information. It's plausible that uh, what has happened in that person is he his coagulating system, the coagulation cascade, got triggered and he probably had internal coagulation, which we had seen a lot of times in this virus, uh, in this uh, particular case. And that probably resulted in a myocardial infarction, what we call, and that resulted in his cardiac arrest. So for a side effect of the virus, the most common side effects of any vaccination, because these are all proteins, right? So they are proteins at the core structure and they come with a vehicle, which is the liquid or, you know, there are certain times there are live viruses, you know, there are certain live vectors. Let's not get into those complications. So the protein, which is the core uh, item and uh, the vehicle. So those two most likely can cause an allergic reaction. That's the most common and the fastest thing that you would have a reaction to any any entrance of a foreign body or a foreign uh, you know agent into the human body so if, within 24 hours that's the time period you you know uh, we are talking about of you know allergic reactions or we can call it anaphylaxis so a person to die off from a protein entry has to die usually what we call is an anaphylaxis that their you know cardiovascular system 
just gets overwhelmed immediately because all the proteins, the, the moment they enter, they start, you know, uh, triggering various different mechanisms of the uh, body and then the circulatory system fails immediately. And that's why you see like, you know, when the most common is if you get a bee sting or a mosquito bite, then you get a swelling and you get itchy and redness. Those are the heralding signs of an allergic reaction. These cases, these are contained when uh, it's an uh, anaphylactic reaction, then the person unfortunately succumbs because the circulatory system cannot keep up, right? So that's probably what might have happened in that person's case. Uh, but, you know, uh, it would be very profound because the person will swell up and the blood pressure will drop. I mean, uh, it's, it's very dramatic for somebody to have that kind of massive allergic reactions. I have seen a few of them, uh, but just to die of heart attack, that does not really seem uh, directly related to the, you know, the vaccine. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bishash. Thank you very much. So uh, I have a question that uh, due to this COVID scares and the lockdown and all, how mm -hmm. are you, how are the doctors managing uh, to take care of the other prevalent diseases that are there? Definitely. So. From day one, we were at the front line here, right? Um, depending on the available resources, we had some, uh, first of all, we did not have enough knowledge to begin with. Uh, like, what are we dealing with? What kind of uh, precautions we will need to take? But there are certain set protocols for respiratory viruses, which were in all, which has always been in place. And we did follow all those things. However, there is two aspects of this, right? Whenever there is something which is a, f a big fear, has a big fear factor, people yes. tend to put other things on the back burner. So you have to understand there are certain things in the medical, uh, you know, field which show themselves or declare themselves immediately. Some they don't. The ones that declare themselves immediately from a patient uh, perspective is I mean, are those that are causing discomfort to the patient, okay? If very uh, common example, especially in a tropical country, if you have abdominal pain, I mean, belly ache, or if mm. you are having, you know, loose motions, you will know immediately and you will be very uncomfortable and you will tend to seek medical help sooner than later. However, yes. for say something which is indolent, that it does not show up right away, for diabetes, which is much more severe, much more complicated, and will cause long-lasting, irreversible effects. People don't care. You will know hundreds, I know hundreds and thousands, maybe millions of people, uh, you know, they literally, they know that they have diabetes or they have other medical problems, but because it's not affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis that they know of, it is affecting in the background, but they don't know, they don't know about it, right? And mm -hmm. they tend to put it in the back burner. So this is the thought process of this is normal human psychology all over the world. Doesn't matter India, doesn't matter America, Britain, China, Russia, Spain, no matter where you, you know, go. This will be some maybe a little bit more due to cultural, uh, you know, uh, nuances or innuendos. But uh, more or less, this is the general human psychology. So when the first uh, pandemic, uh, first wave or the first information came out, then it took a little while for things to settle in because, you know, again, there were a lot of political things going on all over the world because this came, unfortunately, this medical thing came with a huge political baggage with itself as well, which uh, did not do any help to the human population. Um, so people, initially, we did not see a whole lot of difference because, you know, you have to also understand, I'm talking from a United States standpoint, this is a primarily a temperate climate and especially Boston is much more colder than rest of the US. And that time when it first hit December, and January, Feb, that's the peak winter months, right? So at that point of time, uh, you know, we did not see a whole lot of difference uh, in terms of uh, the patient uh, population what kind of disease processes we were dealing with in the hospital. But once once the virus set in and people came to know about, then people did definitely try to put things on the back burner and they 
because they were scared they, because nobody knew and uh, so because of social media and the uh, in the news portals everything was uh, you know flashed out that okay this is a, a very severe situation you got to protect yourself socially distance yourself isolate mm. xyz so people did put their you know indolent issues on the back burner and we did see that definitely there was a drastic uh, you know decline in a mm. lot of uh, emergent um, especially cardiac because i deal with the cardiac cases most of the time so i have more, more information on that we did see a significant drop in pres patients presenting with heart attacks and other uh, you know okay. issues it, mm. it there may be some other aspects to it because if you uh, look at it this way normally in the winter months we have more uh, some you know uptake in the presentation of cardiac cases because when it's winter it's colder it puts a lot of uh, you know pressure on the heart especially if you have to go out clear up the snow that's a lot of work i, I know you, you guys cannot relate to that because you're not dealing with that but having to shovel uh, you know maybe a, like a 10 foot driveway it's immense work it will make you sweat like crazy even with sub zero temperatures so that's a lot of uh, you know pressure to the heart right so that normally people would do in the winter months in uh, this area but last year when the pandemic hit people were advised to minimize uh, you know uh, their activities minimize gatherings and etc so that resulted in less physical activity as well right yes, and when yes, you're huddled that. down in your house do, not doing a whole uh, lot then you know you, you don't uh, sort of um, present with uh, exertion so and that yes. also may be a factor that people didn't present with a whole lot of cardiac issues uh, mm -hmm. you know but you know it, it, it did change i would say and then now it is back to almost like you know previous uh, normal uh, ratios okay so so i am extending your point that basically prevention is better than cure we are trying to follow that but it seems that it's getting harder to prevent in that respect the third wave that we are you know surfacing these days what is mm. what do you think is the practical possibility of it actually happening and uh, how could it so, affect you know how the ratios and higher virul virulence what do you right. think so as i say the this is the viruses uh, you know on way to keep itself alive right so now yes. it is it's saying that okay with my current uh, you know body armor i'm not able to penetrate the human population as much as i would like to right yes and yes. uh, you have to also understand a high virulence by mm -hmm. definition results in low propagation because high virulence means you are going to kill the host quickly right so yes. If you are killing the host quickly, mm -hmm. then you are going to die off yourself too, because how, you will not have the chance or the time factor for the host to go to another host and pass on the virus. So the yeah. virus has to be very clever. It has to balance itself, virulence, so that it can enter enough and cause damage, so that it mm -hmm. gets itself set in deeply, as mm -hmm. well as not kill the uh, host, right? So it kind of has to balance both in uh, that having said that you know it will keep changing itself uh, over the period of time however by that time we are hoping which has happened in other viruses in uh, throughout history uh, that in the human population gets exposed and majority of the population now has some sort of antibody maybe not to that exact same strain or the uh, variant but they will have some other, uh, you know, antibody to some other forms. So effectively, uh, it has been seen that, you know, in that kind of situation, we are able to minimize, not completely stop, but minimize the entry. And more importantly, we are able to minimize the complications or the side effects of the virus once it takes control of the DNA and the manufacturing process inside the cells. Okay, so now there will be short waves. There will be, you know, uh, you know, surges. Those will be dictated by how we are able to sort of break the cycle which the virus utilizes 
itself to propagate and you know disseminate uh, amongst the human population right so on that same note we are talking about number one if you are able to vaccinate yourself if you are mm. able to maintain you know reasonable distancing because yes i know i'm very much aware and uh, you know i have seen these things firsthand i have been or literally i have been on you know treated patients uh, from mm. various socioeconomic you know levels all over the world so i have seen what's the practical ground reality theoretically something might be you know expected but practically it might not happen and again what we are able to do here in the united states cannot be expected to be done in a place which has less resources and higher logistical complications like india right we are so much more densely populated and you know we can't expect a uh, you know area where there are 10 people already in the house to say oh mm. why don't you socially isolate yourself with six feet apart that's not going to happen no. right so yeah. we have to kind of accept what we have and the whole mm -hmm. idea is to maximize the utilization of whatever available resources we have and there are certain uh common knowledge practices that we anybody can uh, you know inculcate or you know uh, indulge in which will help mm -hmm. mitigate the process like you know if we if you are uh, you know in close proximity maybe you try to you know cover your mouth with uh, you know uh, a mask or at least a piece of cloth or something like that uh, there's a lot of uh, interference echo i think somebody's yes, phone or something is come on yes Okay. Yes, doctor. Please. So, um, right. So, cover your mouth. So, basically, what happens is then when you are talking, then whatever is in your respiratory system, because every time we breathe, we send aerosols, which are very minute particles, uh, you know, mixed with protein, water, and of course, now comes the virus along with that, and that they are suspended in the air. So, if you cover yourself, your mouth, nose, just the mouth one, it has to be like whole mouth and nose, right? Your respiratory system, whatever is coming up. So if you're covering that, then you're minimizing the chances for any particles that's coming from within you go into the suspend, you know, and it suspend itself in the air so that the other person now can inhale. Same way, the other person, when they cover their mouth, they're not going to inhale whatever is suspended if there's any, right? And then now when you, if you are possible, if it is possible that you can distance the uh, spatial, uh, you know, difference between two, uh, you know, objects, then the chances of, uh, you know, direct fomite contact even becomes lesser, right? So those are the few things. And then, you know, if you are, you know, touching your nose or like around your face, or did you have, you had a sneeze or a cough, then you try to wash your hands or, you know, and, uh, things like that, that will all help to add, you know, protection. Now, one has to also, uh, you know, understand that, you know, there are v certain specific vulnerable populations, right, which are at a very high risk to begin with. So if you have similar populations, like your elderly grandparents or anybody else with uh, compromised immune system, like if they have a uh, illness, like very commonly diabetes or some kind of malignancy, or if they're on some kind of immune modulating mechanism, uh, I mean, um, medications, like, you know, if they have arthritis there, they will likely be on certain, you know, medications which can compromise the immunity. So in those cases, they need to take some extra precautions. Minimize, you don't need to go into a crowded area. You don't have to, you know, uh, you know, in, indulge in social gatherings. I know it's tough easier said than done but believe me in my house we did not let anybody enter for one and a half years okay. nobody certainly certainly and so basically the lifestyle and hygiene habits are affecting the possibility of individual getting affected is it is definitely that so? adds up it adds to okay. the uh, uh, you know it adds fuel to the fire definitely okay thank you so another question is that as a first line of defense here in india now doctors are prescribing doxycycline and azithromycin with other <laughs> supplementaries of course so mm -hmm. are you using the same protocol there in us as well no not really because okay. uh, you know azithromycin you have to understand these are 
antimicrobials. These are antibacterials, okay? Mm. These don't work on viruses. Azithromycin does okay. not work on viruses. Doxycycline does not. Virus is a different structure. The, see, for this, uh, I think the scope of our discussion is limited because we can't go into the details of how uh, uh, antimicrobial agent works on the cellular structure of uh, mm. microbe. That, that's their primary mode of action because virus is very different. So virus doesn't work that way. You can't um, tackle a virus uh, using antimicrobial oh. like that, right? So these, I believe, uh, these uh, mm. were being used because when you have a respiratory illness, usually the mm. virus, then that mm. virus opens up or breaks down your uh, protective barrier. Yes. Now you have mm. easier entry for the secondary organisms, which are just opportunistic infection, which is just waiting there to get in, inside. So you will see okay. very commonly, once you have a common cold, then after a week or so, now you have a little bit of lingering cough or some maybe a little bit of sinus infection because the bacteria were there and they got entry because the virus got your, you know, protective barriers broken down. Right? Okay, so, so to prevent secondary infection, these drugs have been have used been as using. a precaution. Okay. As, uh, I, I don't, wouldn't say as a precaution because okay. that would not be a very prudent thing to do. Because you know okay. everything we do comes with a huge price. These don't these exactly. medications are not uh, without its own problems. So okay. these should be very very judiciously used uh, only by expert uh, you know individuals who have definite knowledge of what you know they are doing and why they are doing right. Because if you have a high risk population like a person with lung diseases who are mm. already at a very high risk for further complications. In those cases, the chances of them getting secondary infection is super high. The, yes, like a COPD, like a chronic okay. smoker, their lungs are already damaged. The moment they get an infection, they will most likely get uh, the secondary infection than not, right? More, so in those cases, yes, you treat them early on, right? With the various uh, different uh, antibiotics that you have. Mm. Mm. So that's a different scenario. That does not mean every single young, healthy individual who is uh, getting similar, uh, you know, flu-like symptoms or testing positive for, co you know, coronavirus 19, you start them on these, uh, you know, antibiotics or you start them on this kind of uh, treatment modality. That would not be prudent because that will probably end up harming more than, you know, uh, having any sort of benefit. Right. And unfortunately, this kind of indiscriminate use of antibiotics mm. is the primary result. Uh, I mean, primary re uh, reason why in uh, less, re less regulated areas, we have so much antibiotic resistance. And mm. when there is a real need, we can't mm. get things, uh, you know, work as they are supposed to. So it's and a it's very also, yes. double edged sword. So it is even increasing the population of multi-drug resistant and pan-drug exactly. resistant uh, microorganisms. Okay. Correct. So, yes. uh, you know, we have come across something called the MABs, monoclonal antibodies. So yep. do you think it's rationally okay to use toxizulamab in COVID patients? They are being used as a for some... So you have to understand this monoclonal antibodies. So... Mm -hmm. um, these are specifically designed to counteract the protein uh, actions for some, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, you know, antigen, right? That mm -hmm. they are they're like designed uh, like very specifically. So you will see yeah. uh, in today's world. I don't know how much background in, in medical literature or information you have for the current developments, but m many cat malignancies. They are mm -hmm. also now reverting, uh, you know, are coming uh, down from chemotherapy to, uh, you know, uh, antibody therapy. We call it immune therapies because now we are arming the human immune system or that individual's immune system to target those specific cells. Again, at the end of the day, those are all proteins. The, the, the body doesn't know it's a cell or it's a, whatever it is. They recognize only the protein structure because the, it has to be a very specific protein structure which fits into the antibody, then the whole structure then triggers the other cascade of mechanisms, right? For cellular mm -hmm. lysis and modifications, etc. So rational it would be a very difficult term to okay. elucidate on this aspect. 
if mm -hmm. there is a need and you have or one has been able to prove scientific evidence that yes this monoclonal antibody is uh, able to mitigate this specific effect mm -hmm. then depending on which uh, individual you're talking about <coughs> what are the risk benefit ratios involved then okay. you uh, can you know indulge in uh, that treatment modality because other than that every individual situation is different right oh, and right, so. the same be, individuals be, I'm sorry. different I'm sorry. sorry hello it's all please carry on please oh yeah, yeah. please carry on so, for every individual it's different and for that same individual different circumstances will also be different so it's very hard to make it in set in stone oh, okay this is okay this <laughs> is not okay. no it's very it's a little more complicated than that it's not like okay you have diarrhea or you have you know uh giardiasis take mm. uh, metronidazole that's very simple this is well, not viruses okay. are tiny but they're very mm. complicated okay look at and, it this way mm, if you have yes. a big target it's easy mm. to shoot that if you have a small target it's very hard to get to it ah it? i get this i get this okay thank right. you very much uh, yeah. so there is also one concern among the general people that do these vaccines cross the placental barrier or the blood brain ba barriers that we have is there any uh, evidence honestly i don't have enough uh, data to comment on that however okay. if you look at the normal human physiology Mm -hmm. The vaccine itself, um, I don't know if it's going to cross the barrier or not, because the barrier is designed to prevent protein translocation between the two sides. That's the whole point of the barrier. Yes. So I don't know if uh, inoculation of a foreign uh, antibody like that, and I guess it will also depend on what the vehicle is being used to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, inoculate or use as a vaccine. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so that that's a thing that needs to be looked into further before anybody can comment. I don't know. I don't have honestly uh, enough scientific data to comment on those two specific points. But okay. on a mother, if you inoculate a mother, there are mm. chances that yes, the antibody, not the antigen, most likely mm. that bodies will be able to cross the placental barrier okay into the fetus because there i we that's how we get innate immunity too okay Our, oh that's also one how there are certain things that we get innate immunity from and uh, you know so it's uh, you know yet to be seen i i don't know honestly okay so as far as my knowledge goes that ig G is can mm -hmm. cross the barrier and IgA is found in the milk that the mothers feed. So yeah, in milk is correct. Yes, uh, IgG is they can. That's why I'm saying depending on the protein structure, mm -hmm. depending on the individual, uh, so you know those molecular weight, de depending on how many kilo daltons they are, so they will be able to pass through. Because all these barriers, whatever we call them, they are not mm -hmm. rigid structures. These are protein okay. structures made. So there are, uh, you know, gaps and there are CAMs, which are called cellular adhesion molecules. I think I'm getting too complicated for you guys right now. So depending on uh, the cellular adhesion structures, they can pass mm -hmm. through. Okay, It's not airtight. Yes. It's not watertight. That, see, that's how you uh, have these anaphylactic reactions. When you have the anaphylactic reaction going on, then the body is exposed to a certain anti antigen and then it releases certain, you know, cellular uh, cytokines and, you know, uh, other chemicals, which now then go and, you know, work on these uh, cellular membranes and then they become leaky. And that's where oh. you start having all this swelling, all these, uh, you know, problems uh, to emerge. So these are not fixed rigid structures. So these are very dynamic structures and very little can you know destabilize them. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. Yeah. A bit diverting from this. Uh, yeah. I compared the values from Voldemeter up till now. The case fatality of COVID is higher in countries like Brazil, Russia, UK, Italy, even though they come third, fourth, sixth, and 10th on the list as of yesterday that I looked up. Uh, in terms so of why what, do you sorry, you broke off. Sorry, you broke off. Can you start again? Go yes, back? Yes, sure. Yeah. So 
I compared values from mm -hmm. Worldometer, the site, and mm -hmm. the what I found that the case fatality of COVID is mm -hmm. higher in countries like Brazil, Russia, UK, Italy, even mm -hmm. though they come third, fourth, sixth, and tenth on that list. So why do you think is that so? Uh, coming third, fourth, sixth on what list? On the list of uh, the number of cases overall in, in the world. Um, I see. Okay. You, all right. So case fatality, right? It's yes. a very, very complicated uh, term. It's being used willy nilly because you have to understand when you're looking at case fatality, that's a statistical number that yes. does not you know bring with it all the information why that number number is there okay. right why the okay. person died let's look at it this way why the person died right okay. okay they don't care why the person died they are looking the person died end of story was covid related to that person yes okay goes into the statistics right okay. that's how it's that's how it's been calculated so if you look at it the united states right mm -hmm. so I don't know the exact CFR, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, the general population that was uh, vulnerable probably was the one of the highest in the United States. Why? I'll give you a background because the mm -hmm. United States has, I mean, all developed countries. I know about the United States because I've been here most of the recent years. So mm -hmm. here, because of the resources, because of the you know economic uh, and logistical uh, you know uh, uh, benefits Advantage. they they mm -hmm. enjoy, we mm -hmm. are able to keep alive people who are very sick who would not be expected to be alive in uh, okay. less resourceful countries. They would be probably gone 30, 40 years ago. They would be dead. Here we are able to keep them alive for longer and longer period with very very complicated oh. medical uh, medical issues. Right? Okay. What Lot of cases here, uh, you know, I'm not going to the specific details, but I can tell you a lot of cases which will need an ICU level in India. We are keeping them here at home. Okay. With, with, uh, right, with uh, support structure, but that comes with an immense cost and immense resources. Okay. So mm -hmm. now if you affect that person, the chances of that person dying is very high because they're almost already, you know, in that situation, right? Yes. So now let's go back to the question you had. So it's very difficult unless you have all the data in your uh, mm. disposal, right? Okay. What was the comorbidity of that uh, population that they are including in the CFR, right? So mm. just the fact that a person got infected with COVID and unfortunately died doesn't mean they died directly because of the COVID. Yes, you can have being a tangential correlation, but you have to also factor in. I believe that's one thing which is being overlooked all around the world. People are not looking at it properly. They are just using it because, again, it comes with a huge political baggage. So people are trying to capitalize whatever they can with whatever information they have. And unfortunately, with the social media, people with uh, less, uh, you know, cerebral capacity to process information are being dealt, given all sorts of information, and then, you know, they are uh, making their own assumptions and, of course, being swayed by the, uh, you know, the media or whoever is there to, you know, guide their thought process. So it, it has become very complicated. So bottom then, line is okay. the mm -hmm. CFR does not correlate uh, mm -hmm. directly or it's not directly proportional to uh, you know the virus uh, the i would say the case numbers of the virus and mm -hmm. also let, let's look at it this way right the case numbers how are you knowing about the case numbers only when they are uh, diagnosed reported. and detected uh -huh. and recorded correct yes yes there are a lot of cases that they are not being detected they are not being recorded okay. so then you will have a falsely skewed number and this will be higher in less resourceful countries by definition. They will not test. They mm. don't have the money. A person is not mm. going to spend thousand rupees in India just to go and get tested. They're not. It's 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 unreasonable to expect them to do that. Right here. It's different. It's free of cost. You are you know, you can get tested thousand times. Nobody's going to ask you. So people will be going. And despite that, people don't go. 
So, you know, just because a person got tested uh, and became positive doesn't mean that, you know, that person is going to die. And at the same way, the person who died doesn't mean they died because of uh, COVID only, right? So those two numbers are sort of, uh, they have correlation, yes, definitely in the back end, but they're not directly proportional. So it's very hard to understand, okay, they have so many, you know, case numbers, uh, but they uh, do not have so much CFR. Having said that, you have also uh, got to include the fact that you have to understand what kind of resources they have there at their disposal and what kind yeah. of baseline, you know, health uh, condition the population enjoys, right? In uh, Brazil, I believe they have a generally reasonably healthier population. Okay, so okay. healthy is a subjective, don't you think? Healthy, uh, what what is the level of health that that we call healthy individuals? No, no, right. Uh, but when I say healthy, means they are not uh, bogged down by major, like you know, cardiovascular or uh, you know, other um, like respiratory or okay. hem hem hematologic or like renal diseases. You know why? Uh, because by what? the time they are affected, they will not be able to survive too long. They will die. Okay. So they are okay. wiped out of the population. So the effect, I'm saying the effective population that the virus is able to infect, it doesn't mm -hmm. get the chance to affect like complicated cases like they can in the European countries or United States. Because if you go to a nursing home here, the person probably unfortunately has heart, kidney, liver, lungs, all, uh, you know, shot. So, okay. you know, and they're not functioning. So they are already so vulnerable. But that population, you will not uh, have on, uh, you know, a less resourceful country because they will be already long dead, long gone, right? And then, depending on, uh, you know, what kind of resources you have, you can keep people survive, you know, uh, you know, alive, despite having severe COVID effects as well. Like we, here, we were able to, not all of them. At, mm -hmm. at one point, everything will come to a stop, but we can linger on for a decent amount of time. So that will also affect your CFR, right? If I can keep a person alive in the ICU for 30 days, I, you know, then of course that uh, you know CFR goes down right away. If the person versus if that person dies within a couple of days, now you're having the numbers to you know, uh, over, you know, basically circulate. But here you don't. So that will also affect your CFR. So it's very hard to, you know, know directly that, oh, there's, you know, case uh, diagnostic rate is this much, case number, but their CFR is low, right? Okay. So there are a lot of other factors involved in it. And again, the genetic, see, look at it this way. If mm. uh, reasonably speaking, I do not think the number of cases that were positive in India mm -hmm was mm -hmm. less than uh, any other country in the l beginning of last year when the pandemic started. But mm. the Indian population did not succumb. Why? Because the Indian genetics was not conducive enough for the virus to go inside and cause enough damage. Yes, you can be positive. It can be in your nasal system and the upper respiratory act, but doesn't mean you are going to die from it. Right. So there are a lot of variant factors that goes on into this uh, in a whole picture. Okay, okay. So now uh, you know there has been something going around that the first and second waves affected the uh, old ages, then the middle ages, and now mm -hmm. it is thought that it is going to affect the third wave is going to affect the uh, very children, uh, the mm -hmm. infants. How mm -hmm. how true do you think that is, or how correct is that fact is? Well, that that uh, you have to take it with a bit of a grain of salt. Why okay. I say that okay. is because um, you know. Normally, as I say, mm -hmm. the most vulnerable population were the elderly and the sick. So when the yeah. first virus came through, it did not need to do a whole lot of, you know, uh, permutation and combination mm -hmm. for its mm -hmm. genetic structure to get entry into those people and kill them. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. So it was, again, now look at that way. It was going, so th again, it's not very simple, but these are certain, some of the factors that might have, uh, you know, uh, resulted in the uh, statistics that we are seeing. I don't have the, all the data from the WHO or the CDC, but the information that I have and with my knowledge that I could, you know, 
piece two plus two together. That's what it seems like, okay? That the first wave, it got to the most vulnerable population because it was easy for the virus. Every organism will take the easier route first. What, it doesn't make any sense for you to walk uphill if you can walk down on the plane, does it? it no, not. You will not yes. do it. Any virus yes. will not, or any organism will not do it. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's a one aspect of it. Number mm -hmm. two, the virus, so when it went through the vulnerable population and killed out a lot of uh, those population, then the propagation stops there, right? It doesn't yes. propagate. So then yes. the virus says, wait a second, this is not helping me. I need something else. So now okay. it mutates itself. Now it gets to the other population, which is a little bit more healthier, right? Mm -hmm. This is the aspect of it only. Now you have to also understand the sick and the compromised population, they're mainly homebound or they're hospital bound, right? So mm -hmm. they're not mingling much, right? So mm -hmm. now when that population is sort of wiped out, then you are targeting the second population which are kind of uh, mingling around which is okay. the young adult so now they yes, are going yes. to propagate between themselves if everybody sits in their home the virus is not going to propagate right the virus will die out mm -hmm. but the fortunate for the virus this is not possible because in this world you cannot not uh, you know uh, move around because you have to do for your survival now so now it's kind of a luck of the draw. Whatever you can do and how much is that going to protect you? Having said that, the young, the children, see, I, from day one, when they were saying the virus does not affect children, that was a very mm. wrong statement. I'm not the director of the CDC. I'm not the attorney general okay. of the United States. You know, mm. I don't have the authority to challenge them. Mm. But as a doctor, as a common, uh, you know, um, uh, as a person with, you know, reasonable amount of cerebral processing power, I could tell you from day one that mm. they say that it does not affect children was not based on much truth because nobody had that evidence. And it doesn't make sense that baby is mm -hmm. made of the same DNA as the adult. Why will that not happen? Right. It's a virus. This is not a physical okay. ailment. Physical ailment is a different thing. This is a foreign antigen or foreign you know, uh, agent that's gaining entry and it, it is going to use your DNA. So just saying that they will not affect was not a this very prudent sense. thing to do. Mm. Yes, there are logistical problems. How can you put a mask over a baby which is going to cry all the time? Yes, I understand that. That's a different story, but doesn't mean that, oh, mm. they won't get affected. No, that was not a very good idea. There is okay. another aspect to it, which is a little bit more complex, but I would probably, you know, uh, give a couple of lines on that. The virus, you know, it doesn't really mean that if you're healthy immune system that you are all good to go. No, it can come as a, you know, uh, sort of a double edged sword because remember when I said first, depending on where the virus is attaching and what mm. kind of a portion of the DNA it is uh, you know mirroring to create the proteins it can unfortunately trigger your immune system as well once it does then depending on who it does and how your internal body structure is uh, designed it can trigger your other uh, you know processes which is one of them is the coagulation process and then that will cause massive damage right away so if a person is immunocompromised, then they are better okay. off in that situation. That's where it comes, where we are using the steroids and the other mechanism to shut down the immune mechanism. Because once it is triggering the immune mechanism, then it's going to take over, uh, you know, lose all control. Normally, these are mm -hmm. all very controlled. But when the virus came and it triggers the immune mechanism, it lets them lose, total out of control. Sort of, you can say, most common... Uh, nearest uh, sort of, uh, you know, similarity would be like a cancer cell. Like a, normally the oh, cells okay, are okay. designed, they are on control, they propagate, they multiply, they do X, Y, Z. But once it becomes yeah. out of control, now you have a cancer. Same way, the immune system, when it's controlled, it's to your benefit. When it's out of control, then that's your problem. And that's where uh, uh, came in uh, the scenario that we were having to use steroids to shut down the immune mechanism. 
right? Okay. 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 So that's where so, steroids come in. Exactly. Okay. So that's how we were using the steroids and what what mm. we were using it for. Um, so, so having said that, now you have to understand, like you know, the the babies also they did not. I mean, they don't have their immune system all built up and robust as a young healthy adult. So it takes yes. time. So hmm. yes, babies may not show a lot of complications, but doesn't mean they're not going to get affected. All right, all right. right. So okay. yeah, it's it's a lot of things are uh, hidden here. It's very <laughs> hard to, yeah, it's very hard to say, okay, this is one point data point, and okay, this is how we are going to extrapolate it into X, Y, Z. No, I, I don't think that's a very, you know, rational or prudent <laughs> thing to do. Unfortunately, the media and everybody is hmm. doing that. But okay. that's, that's not a right thing to do. Mm. Thank you very much, doctor. Uh, I think I am over with my questions. Anybody else with a question? Aniket, Borishan, if okay. you had questions. Sir. Go ahead. I am at a question. 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 যে একজনকে একই দিনে হচ্ছে একই ভ্যাকসিন দুবার দেওয়া হয়েছিল মানে সেই ক্ষেত্রে কোনো প্রবলেম হতে পারে মানে এই ব্যাপারটা আমি একটু জানার আছে যে একই একই দিনে একই ভ্যাকসিন দুবার দেওয়া হয়েছিল মানে ভুল বসত আর কি আচ্ছা ইয়া আই মিন দ্য চান্সেস আর লেস यस লুক এট ইট দিস ওয়ে ইফ ইউ আর লুকিং এট এ সাইড এফেক্ট প্রোফাইল অর অ্যানাফিল্যাক্সিস অ্যালার্জিক রিঅ্যাকশন यस ইওর চান্সেস গো হাই বাট ইফ ইউ আর লুকিং এট এ ভাইরাল ভ্যাকসিনেশন রেজাল্ট্যান্ট এফেক্ট uh probably not a whole lot probably not a whole lot and again it depends if you are using the attenuated virus uh, or the mrna but i would say despite that because it has been attenuated enough that just a double dose is going to cause major you know, uh, detrimental effect but if you are looking at side effect per se because of uh, allergic reaction to any of the particles or the portions of the vaccine yes definitely your chances uh, are likely to go up okay sir mane ki sir ekta ki matra thake nirdishto je ekta dine eto tai mane kono matra thake ki vaccine ta newar ba shirokom kichu of course it is see the, it is not uh, the, the high ceiling is the lower ceiling because now you are talking about um, uh a whole different scenario here this is not a antibiotic that you look at the higher ceiling right so it's a little bit more complicated and in depth to go into the full details but bottom line is virus uh, i mean vaccinations are designed on the on the sort of mic i mean i don't know if you know about mic minimum inhibitor uh, you know uh, concentration that is used for antibiotics similarly they use that okay this is the minimum amount of inoculation that we need to provide for this desirable effect i don't think anybody goes on the maximum amount because that is unreasonable and that will not be logistically possible so just a double dose probably would yes, not sir. uh be that big of a detrimental but i believe only the manufacturer if they have enough data uh regarding the ceiling uh they would be able to elucidate it further okay but that i don't think just two doses will be too much of a complication and if it did not when uh, how long back did the person get those two uh jabs okay sir okay sir how long Thank back you, sir. how long back did they get those two jabs do you know sir ota to sir ota jana nahi je mane pore ki chhe jani kintu ami khobor ta peyechhilam mane khobor ta dekhechi so okay so basically it is likely that it has passed a few days definitely right tai mone hoy sir karon ha the dose er matra ta beshi hoye gechhe but when did you get the news when did you get this information i think sir two months ago two months ago okay yeah so by the time if that person would have died it would have been up in the news so you are good to go <laughs> thank you doctor okay, sir. Okay, sir. yeah thank you sir yeah thank you sir well, okay head sir how much time do i have navneel yes how 10 much minutes? time do we have 10 minutes 10 minutes okay riddhi so you have yes, you have sir. 10 more minutes you have 10 more minutes of navneel 
to mm. talk so okay and uh, if you don't have any question then i'd like to request navanil to uh, tell all of you what is your advice what is your guideline to handle the uh, third wave or something what i believe you have already said uh, you have already given all the advice all the things but even then if we have sorry uh, very practical sorry to interrupt there's too much background noise i think can you meet somebody i can't hear uh, mr sharkar from uh, clearly there's too much background noise going on yeah thing is thing is uh, uh, from the practical point of view we might be you might be having some advice or some guideline uh, for all of us mhm those so um for the yeah party. definitely right so uh um, you know i i guess the plausible thing to do is like you know try to get vaccinated as much as you can of course if you are you know have certain contraindications then that's a different story that's one aspect to it number two aspect is try to maintain whatever you know personal hygiene and you know uh spatial distancing so, possible and as i said like you know if you have nothing if you don't have a surgical mask you don't have to go and buy this uh, mask from china you know that you know they are making billions of dollars out of just because of the pandemic you can use at least some kind of cloth make two three layers everything uh, phys- basically you are talking about a physical so, barrier i mean i was thinking hello yeah, hello yeah hi uh um, i don't know there's a lot of uh, can people hear me yes yes doctor we can hear you yes, so you yes. said about getting vaccinated and then maintaining personal hygiene personal distancing hygiene and, yeah, f- yeah distancing if you can if you can't if you uh, say if you have four people in one room then yeah mm-hmm. at least you know cover your mouth uh, mm-hmm. as much as you can sure. if, especially if you feel sick then you know it uh, be it more so you you know kind of uh, give importance to you know not touch or hug people close by <laughs> and you know um uh, and you know cover your mouth with whatever you can if you have like you know some kind of cloth make two or three folds and cover your mouth and nose at the same time right so basically your entry and exit points of air that you, uh, that's what you need to look at and uh, that's one thing and then most important thing is if you start feeling sick then mm. please see medical help earlier than later the biggest problem that i have seen i have uh, been interacting with you know mm. various hospitals all throughout india uh, you know uh, all, literally um, you know across the country mm. and the united states here england uh, with all this and most of the cases i have seen if the virus has got enough time to set itself in deep and now you're in uh, you know uh, showing lot of uh, you know complications then it's mm. very hard to revert the whole process then it's all really up uh, to the virus and your body how to you know how you are going to uh, respond to the battle so the right. best strategy would be if you start having symptoms then mm. better off getting medical help earlier than later because if you think you know you, your virus is the virus is trying to take over then you probably need to be on all those medication so hopefully you know <clears throat> uh you can get ahead of the virus rather than the opposite because once it's the opposite right. then literally logistically it will be impossible uh to revert. You know, yeah not only revert to even maintain yes maybe oh. uh, a young healthy person i can mm-hmm. keep him but i will have to keep that person in the ic for maybe a month or two months logistically yeah. that's probably not you know expected Visible. in mm-hmm. a place where you don't have the resources first the medical resources next the monetary resources right oh yes yes so yes. everything comes into play it's it's uh, not that uh, straightforward so one has to look you know further down and have a foresight that you know mm-hmm. you know you are not going to be able to come out of that situation uh, you know uh, safe and sound so okay. that's uh, one thing i would say and mm-hmm. um still it's warmer months i mean the, the one benefit we have in india is like you know we are primarily a 
tropical country. Tropical so country. we have the warmer months that do mm -hmm. help us, uh, you know, in terms of the propagation <laughs> of the virus and all okay. that stuff. Okay. It does help us. Uh, but in winter months, it's more uh, relevant to colder countries like here. But even in India, when it gets colder, then people try to huddle together. You know, then you normally mm. every season you have the seasonal uh, viruses as well. So those things itself. So now if you have a flu or a common cold, then you are going to cough more. So then if you also have COVID uh, along with that, so now you are going to spread the COVID more. So, every, so those things are also going to come into play at that point of time. Right. Okay. So Thank you, and again, Thank also you. another mm -hmm. big thing which I uh, am seeing that people are not really understanding. They think once I am vaccinated, I'm invincible. No, that's not <laughs> going to be the case. That's not okay. the case. No. Okay. Vaccine is to hopefully minimize the complications and the severity of the disease. Certainly. Sim yes. Similarly, we have like for mycobacterium tuberculosis, right? We take the mm -hmm. BCG vaccine. Mm -hmm. That doesn't guarantee you from impact infection. It only is designed to prevent complications of mm. tuberculosis. Similarly, you have to understand this is what the virus, uh, you know, Vax for this case is going to happen. And for okay. the most common, uh, I would say, uh, not common, the most uh, close relative of this virus could be the um, the influenza virus. So we have been exposed to this influenza virus for more than a century. Despite that, we still get infected every year. We yes. have to take vaccines every year, right? Yes. Do the math now. Now do the math. So this we have only been exposed to the coronavirus for what? Less than two years. Yes. Influenza we are talking about more than a century. Century. Exactly. And yet we have to take vaccines every yes. year because it keeps changing its structure. It's very similar to this virus. This is a little bit more stronger, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh -oh. uh, okay. virulent. So it mm -hmm. might be, you know, to our advantage that it's a little bit more virulent because then we can stop the propagation earlier than not. But, uh, you know, it's still yet to be seen. So please don't think once I am vaccinated, oh, I am good to go do mm -hmm. whatever I want, partying. No, no, that's not a very good idea. No. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if you don't get affected, you are going to pass it on to somebody else who will be succumbing to the problem. So that's not going to okay. be a help in the long run, right? Yes, doctor. So that's, I believe, um, you know, what we have uh, for the time being. Anybody else has any other questions? I got to go. Not only, not only it was wonderful. In fact, we could have gone hours long. But, yes. Uh, so Do you have, have any other pressing, pressing questions stage. specific? In, in case anybody else has any specific question that Dr. Bishwas can answer you within one or two minutes, you may. Or else, or else uh, you do not have liberty to stretch him anymore because he has already given us 32 more minutes than what he has committed. This is too big. Okay. So uh, our session time is also almost uh, over, almost over. I mean, yes, it is sir. already over. So really, yes. in case anybody yes, has sir. any very stressful question, so do that. And now after that, if you think that Dr. Bishas deserves a thank you our side. Nobody has intimated me. So maybe we'll wrap up. Hmm. Okay, so if you think, if you all think that Dr. Bishas deserves a thank from our side, do you think he deserves that? Obviously, most obviously, a <laughs> huge, huge, huge thank you to yes. Dr. Navanil Bishas for gracing our session and today. Riddhi Rishab, make sure that Dr. Bishas, you, if you want, you can take his email ID and make sure that he receives our thanks plug as soon as possible okay so okay. Uh, send that send that to him and uh, so now it is up to you how will you thank him how will you say uh, dada mama kaka sir whatever one, whatever one last thing i would like to uh, say is please please do not politicize this thing because uh -huh. unfortunately all around the world People have politicized this for to their Absolutely. maximum benefit, Absolutely. And, and and big corporations have maximized this to their economic benefit. And the one uh, sector that has paid the ultimate price 
is the human population. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Mm. yes sir. It's, it's extremely saddening to see that, you know, for corporate greed and political benefit, uh, people have compromised the basic human life here and common sense people have mm. you know literally buried their common sense and normal thought process civic sense processing power and even social bonds etc have been completely burned down to the ashes which is very yeah, unfortunate we have already so, we have already paid a very high price we exactly so, a please, very high price. so we cannot right. afford so my to lose that bits would be please look into the whole situation from a holistic standpoint and look into the big picture and then try to understand the information before making a judgment just because something is being circulated in social media or the news channel. Right. right. Try to use your own judgment and own processing before, you know, jumping into any conclusion. The conclusion. Hmm. Okay, okay, and good so luck to everybody and be safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, so yes, even you take care of yourself. Yes, we we, uh, we will do. And um, as I said, I've been you know trying to see whatever I can be uh, of help and participate with uh, you guys, with uh, you know your president and secretary, most honorable Devashi Sharkar, who is an most uh, you know amazing person, literally. I have never yes, seen anybody yeah. like that across the world, a person genuine and, uh, you know, honest uh, to his, you know, cause, a person like that. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, Thank you, Dodo. See you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, we'll be uh, wrap up yes, this session. Yeah. Okay, so we had a wonderful session. I did not expect it to go so well. So we will uh, end the, officially end the session uh, by reciting the queue. I ask you to please turn on your microphones. Everybody, Udan. So we go three, two, one. We learn, we learn together, together to learn better, learn faster, learn, 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 learn better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. So, Dora, sir. Dora, excuse me to all. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Will, yes, sir. Be, yes, will yes. you stop recording?